Hey folks, this is Hutch and it's uh, the last week of June 2024 and I'm excited to have an old friend, an old friend from Whitetail Rendezvous days and Rand Thomas, um, he and I met and we, we talked about managing whitetail deer and what it took and then uh, Rand's looked me up about a month ago and said, hey Bruce, um, are you back in podcasting land? And I said, yes I am. So. We got together and did did a preview show, and he thought he'd like to jump on and share with everybody what he and some of his friends have created at Hunt Pro. Now, Rands is a managing partner, and he's going to explain that. But Rands, it's so good to see you again. So good to have you on the show, and I'm truly excited about the technology that you're unleashing in the out of doors. Hutch, it's been uh, a, a real pleasure to reconnect and have a reason to reconnect, which uh, when you and I first talked on Whitetail Rendezvous, I have been was doing what I've been doing for 30 years, uh, which was primarily wildlife consulting as a wildlife biologist, working with private landowners across the country, um, helping them better manage their wildlife, obviously, end results being grow bigger, better deer, have more turkeys, more quail, more waterfowl, et cetera. And, um, that's always been my passion and um, was blessed in, in being able to do that for a living for so long. I worked with some big brand names along the way in the industry, uh, Tecumati Wildlife Systems, Cabela's. So, uh, but always consulting has been uh, a primary job. Uh, you know, my, my uh, bread and butter, or it's been more of a side job that accompanied some of these other um, has um, along the way with other uh, brands in the industry to help them achieve what they were trying to do and so forth. But I uh, did a lot of hunting TV years ago, burned out a little bit on that. And uh, so I'm just back to, I was back to where I was when this all started, what we're going to talk about today um, with consulting. And uh, when I met this group out of Georgia, uh, Carrollton, Georgia, uh, 121G. And um, so where that took us starting in around 2019, um, I would call myself a consulting partner with 121G and Hunt Pro LLC. Um, and uh, I have advised, I have been involved with uh, business growth, getting the word out, just like we're doing today, telling people about this truly, um, you know, the cliches are, are worn pretty thin in this industry, but truly revolutionary kind of game-changing um, technology that we are uh, we have been developing for three or four years now and and have it a place now where we actually have users, many, many users, landowners, large properties, large, um, well-funded properties and projects, all the way to a few hundred acres and a few cameras. Um, but it started with the foundation being artificial intelligence and image recognition, um, basing that on trail camera images is kind of the where it all began and it's grown into something far beyond that but that's always been kind of the uh, the foundation the backbone of what hunt pro brings to the table so let's uh, go back and you touched on it just a little bit the specifics of why you think it's a game changer so the people listening well it sounds like it could be this it could be that there's a lot of other programs out there. There's a lot of other technologies out there, technology out there. But the biggest thing that I've seen is the number of guys that are in the business now of whitetail management, land management, combination thereof, and the guys selling seed. So now they're doing, they're feeding the deer, they're managing the timber, managing the habitat, and they're growing big deer. So as an overview, why would a person be interested in Hunt Pro to do those things? Yeah, let's just dive in. Uh, I'll, I'll start with a backstory. And, and I tell this because it, I think it, it helps to um, present the case of, of how long I've been thinking about this, how long I've, I've personally wanted to see something like this uh, come to be. And then uh, it's a real way, actually, um, through just chance meetings, being able to be a part of it. Uh, back way, way back 2000, 
six, seven, eight, somewhere in that window. Um, back then I was doing large scale trail camera surveys. And so let's just talk about that real quick. Trail camera survey for any of your listeners that, that aren't really sure what that means. Uh, we deploy uh, digital trail cameras on a property, uh, one per 100 acres density. Um, and we deploy them for two weeks and we set them up to take a picture every three to five minutes, depending on the density of deer, the density of other, other wildlife that you're going to attract to your camera trap. And so, yes, uh, in the states, counties and states where it's legal to use attractant uh, corn or another attractant, uh, uh, some kind of you know commercial product, we put that out in front of the camera. And our, our goal, we do this late summer um, in August and September. Our goal is to bring as many deer into that camera trap and take good, clean pictures of them. When I say clean, I mean, not with a big feeder in the middle of it, not with limbs hanging over, we're obscuring the deer. We want good, clean camera traps and good, clean photos. That helps our artificial intelligence identify what that animal is. And it helps you as a viewer or look, someone looking at the image through human eyes, uh, tell more directly what it is. So trail camera survey, just a part of what all this is and what all this does is we take those pictures after two weeks, even at those settings of a, of a low number of pictures per X number of minutes, um, you're going to have, even on a, a relatively smaller property, you could have 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 pictures that someone in the old days of doing this had to look at. They had to look at each picture and say, there's nothing in it. There's one buck, there's one doe, there's a, a fawn. And that's where this, the process starts and where it became so time consuming and really, really just mind numbing the amount of work that had to go into running and processing the data from a trail camera survey. Running those cameras and, and throwing some attracting out in front of the cameras and checking on things for a couple of weeks, no, no big deal. Now cameras are cheap. They will take uh, very high resolution pictures, SD cards that'll hold an infinite number of pictures. So, you know, back in the old days, I mean, I remember running my first trail camera survey with 35 millimeter trail cameras, you know, and we had to take the pictures down to the, the print shop. <laughs> and print them off. Uh, there was no digital images back then. And then that evolved digital, digital imagery and faster cameras, more, more accurate cameras, cheaper cameras, et cetera, et cetera. So what goes on in the field is not that big a deal anymore. Um, it's affordable for most people if you wanna run a trail camera survey. I would still say that trail camera survey done right is probably still one of our most high accuracy um, herd modeling methods of all the different sampling methods and, and census methods that have been created over the years, whether it be harvest data, observation data, they all work together. You need to do them all, but, but trail camera survey is very, very important. So for all of my clients who were doing this to tell them, you've got too many does, you've got this many does, this many bucks, this many fawns, and this is your recruitment rate, your sex ratio. You're familiar with this, but some of your listeners may not be, but it's really got on, uh, caught uh, real popularity within even your modest landowner, um, budget-wise, size-wise, to run a trail camera survey. People have been writing about it. We've been talking about it for two decades now. And uh, people are starting to do it, but they're realizing when you've got even 10,000, and I've seen surveys up to 50,000, 80,000 pictures, that in the old days before Hunt Pro, with AI helping us now and technology, uh, someone would literally, poor soul, myself <laughs> for years, would have to look at each picture and hit the right arrow key, you know, tap, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. And then there's a doe, I write down doe or I plug it into a spreadsheet. So we do what's called a head count. And that's the first step. It can be the second step, but it's a major part of trail camera survey. We count every buck, every doe, every fawn that we see for whitetails in each picture. I, we know we're counting them multiple times. That's not the point. We're looking at a relative density of bucks to does showing up on camera and does to fawns showing up on camera, if that makes sense in this formulation. Uh, the Jacobson method developed in the late 90s uh, is what we've all kind of built on and, and been using and, and continuing as individuals or researchers to further enhance and evolve it. But, um, but then you've done that, you've done the head count. That takes hours and hours and hours of time to, you can't filter these pictures. I can't say just like we can now, just show me does, just show me bucks, just show me fawns and show me what the count is. What is AI telling me? How many did it count? Uh, now we can with Hunt Pro. 
The next is we would literally go in and, and start looking at every picture of every buck. And we would, unique is what it's called. We take an individual buck and we kind of isolate him. And then we go look through the, all the other batches of pictures in every folder for every camera. And we try to match other pictures of him to the one picture of him we found. We give him a name. We estimate his age. In the old days, it was called foldering. We would create a file or a folder for every single individual buck on your property. You've dealt with a lot of different size properties, a lot of different size deer herds. When we last spoke, you had a place in, um, I think it was Wisconsin. We, we talked a lot about your alfalfa field and those things can just load up with deer. So imagine, you know, running a survey like this on a property like that, where you got a high density, you may have 50, 80, a hundred. I know we've done surveys on larger properties where we, we may have 200 individual unique bucks. And from spike to the oldest, biggest buck, we have to pull them out of all these pictures, identify them, unique them, profile them, and then throw every picture we can find of them out of that those batches into that folder. That was, um, again, mind-numbing. The, the, the time you would hate trail cameras and looking at trail camera pictures by September, October. <laughs> but the value of the information was so important to be able to base harvest recommendations and to determine your hit list. You know, you hear this thrown around a lot, the hit list. Well, he's on the hit list. He's not. That's Joe. That's Bob. That's Bill. That's Mac. Um, they are very important uh, components of harvesting and regulating your harvest management. Just knowing what buck do we determine um, on the hoof. And you never know for sure until he's down, but you, we have educated, very educated guesses now and experienced guesses and how old a deer is in trail camera. Um you know, Bob's three. Our goal is to get them to four, maybe four to five, five to six, whatever your your goals are. So we're going to pass Bob. And, but everybody that hunts here needs to un know who Bob is and be able to identify him in the field. So you then you have to put all these pictures into this PDF printed paper document and you give it to the owner, the client. They have to give it to their friends, their guests, their hunters. And you hope somewhere through that process, that, um, you know, Bob didn't get lost in the mix and gets shot by, you know, I don't want to stereotype, but, but a Florida hunter who's, you know, biggest deer in his whole life is a 120 class eight point, you know, and they see Bob that on a very well managed property might be a 130, 140 class three year old and Bob's gone because they just didn't know. So now what we did was take all of that process, which was so important and so integral and better managing white-tailed deer for my clients, for a lot of landowners across the country and made it so much more efficient and effective and time, less time consuming using Hunt Pro. And so now that I've explained that, let's talk about Hunt Pro and what it does. Um, in 2005 or six, I had a client down with a large, down here in the South, we call them plantations, farms, and you, know, you go out Midwest, call them ranches, South Central U.S., you know, ranches uh but this was called a, a quail plantation and and so he wanted to grow big deer we ran the survey he had retired from the software development world and community and had been very successful so when i showed him what we did to, to deliver that package of information he looked at me for the very first time and this was going on 20 years ago i'm afraid um and said you need to be using image recognition to look at these pictures for you and I said, wow, you know, it had just kind of was being talked about back then for finding terrorists in airports. Uh, it was archaic then as to what it is now. But um, I said, yeah, you bet. Show, tell me more. What, what do we need to do here? Um, he went to his people and explored the opportunity to, to start a company back then uh, and use AI image recognition with trail camera pictures. Back then, he said bad news. My people tell me it's going to cost, you know, well over a million dollars to even build the platform. And so the market wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, withstand that kind of investment in, a, in an app like that back then. And so I walked away, we walked away from that opportunity, but I never stopped thinking about it. Every trail camera season would turn around and I would think, please, someone, let's do this. I'll, I'll give you everything I got as far as what I know and what I, I envision in my mind as how this thing could work to save us this, 
you know, this, the pains of having to do what we have to do with all these pictures. And, um, but then, you know, as the hunting community grew, whether they were doing trail camera surveys or not, um, a lot of ranch owners in, in running 20, 30, 50 cameras or more, they were hauling in 100,000, 150,000, 200,000 uh, digital pictures, sometimes more. And they, even though they weren't counting deer like we do with a trail camera survey or trying to unique every buck, just looking for their big target bucks and, and kind of profiling, they had the same struggle is when is this going to get easier? I don't want to sit here and hit this right arrow key, uh, you know, 20,000 times to find 10 different individual bucks that we want to shoot this year. And, and that's kind of where the two worlds collided for me anyway. Uh, the group <coughs> out of Carrollton, Georgia, 121G had been very successful in software development uh, and in the medical industry, financial industry, uh, investment industry, and um, had just crushed it and um, went public, sold and regrouped and, and it, at least four or five of the major players in, in that group are, are avid bow hunters. And they had a ranch in Texas called Red Cloud, where a lot of what they had started uh, began with the same problem. Um, guys, we're sick of looking at all these pictures. We're looking for needles and haystacks here. We're software developers. What can we do for our, ourselves, really, is where it started. Uh, and Jonathan Samples, um, the, the, the main developer, the, the brains, the wizard behind the curtain with Hunt Pro uh, that was a part of the 121G group um, through AI Solutions, he, um, he set to work. And he built an AI proprietary, now patented AI engine to that focuses on what do you see in a trail camera image and how do I identify things. They built that framework and realized, hey, this has made our dreams come true. Surely it can help other people. Let's let's start building this into a, a, a publicly accessible app. And that was about the time that I met up with them through uh, through people that that knew them and knew me and knew. We were both working in that same field in that world of of, of uh, lots of trail camera images and struggling with getting all that data. So when we met, uh, we hit it off. We were, we were all avid outdoorsmen. And I said, guys, I've been dreaming of this now for 15 years. And uh, I have have a lot of conceptual thoughts and, and architectural design and ideas um, I'd like to share with you. And and let's see where this goes. So we we partnered and um, I became a partner with the group and started to work um, several long days and evenings in the ink board room, um, you know, mapping it out. So here's what you've built. Here's what it does. Here's in my mind what it needs to do. And it's so, so easy then once you have the, the framework to, um, I mean, the changes just started happening overnight and um, it became what it, more of what it is today and has never stopped growing it and grew from there into this complete mapping program and mapping system which is integrated in with your trail camera locations and and so many other things but we'll stay focused on the the, the ai image recognition and trail cameras so anybody so let's with, go let's go I, i've got the screen I, up I, I, let's go there now can you see it I, yeah i see the home screen okay so where do you want me to go well, you know, all of a lot of information of what you're going to hear me talk about today is here on our, our home screen website. Um, you can go to pricing features about and, and learn a lot of this. Um, uh, and, and what we call this, and I think it's it's very valid, is uh, Hunt Pro is a powerful, scalable AI hunting and wildlife management technology platform. We are the world's only AI hunting and wildlife management platform. Currently, currently today, um, and intend to stay that way and stay at the top of the game. And so, if you'll read through a lot of this information, anyone listening that wants to to learn more, please do. Um, and it's up on YouTube too, so you'll be able to see it on YouTube. Yeah, there's YouTube videos, there's testimonials, uh, a lot of great information here. And and we've started, you know, organically. Um, you know, we we have a growing list of users, um, large properties, you know, names of hunting properties in your area, you may actually recognize if you're in those areas. Um, we, we, uh, 
kind of invested more of our time and money into building, you know, just a, a, a tremendously great app and working out bugs and kinks and learning from our customers and learning, um, you know, through our work with R and D together and how to enhance it, make it better, add new features. And so now we're at a place where, you know, we have a very powerful platform. This goes far beyond uh, a lot of your individual trail camera app filtering systems, AI systems. You know, if you want to look at bucks, they'll show you what they, the pictures that they think are only bucks, but, what we're doing, and if you look at the picture above, it'll probably show you the tags in these photos. We literally tag these animals uh, with an acronym. So B for buck, D for doe, F for fawn. And all of that's data. That Where is, is that? Data. Where is that located? So I can. Uh, let's see. I'm not, I guess I can. Am I toggling your. No, I'm toggling. Okay. Go to features uh, and just click on all features. And so if you scroll down the mobile, we have a fully functional mo mobile app, which uh, does most things that web app does, but, but not fully. Um, and I'm sure there's a photo here somewhere with our tags, but when you, when you upload images, let's start, you know, at the very foundation uh, of, of, of problem solutions with hunt pro. What I found with, there was a one app, maybe two apps out there at the time when we were really getting this thing going and I'd actually been in, in contact with one. They reached out to me to, to do some help and assist with them and so forth. It didn't work out, but um, I tried their platform and the upload speed was incredibly slow. And that's what you'll find with most of, if there, there's not many, but any other apps that are out there that, that, you know, the time it takes to upload a image that's 12 megapixel or more into the cloud and then have your AI system look at it and tell you what they th it thinks it is. Uh, there, look at tagging. I don't know if there's images associated with those. Um, and what that shows right there is just another tagging feature where we can actually uh, uh, create a point class for every buck um, with just clicking your mouse, left tag, right, right click, left click, or your pad. Um, and it gives you an option of, of things that you can do with these pictures to modify the data, the AI, change the AI. If it, if it mistags something, nothing in this world, you know, with, around this type of artificial intelligence is going to be hundred percent, but ours is very accurate. So there's very little work you, don't, you have to do most times in regards to that. But um, <clears throat> the images are tagged. You open them up in your viewfinder, but back to that upload speed, you take any SD card from any camera, any brand. If you're doing SD cards, we do import some images from some, or all images from some cellular cameras. Uh, Spartan is one, there's a couple, a few others, and we're working through that to be able to utilize more cellular cameras. But um, any SD card, you can plug it in, uh, go find it, Use open our speed loader app, which is that top bullet. Uh, it's a separate app you download to your computer. And the upload speed is then incredibly fast. Um, and, and what it's doing is really hard to, to fathom it's taking a 12 to 32 megapixel picture. It's uploading it through the portal into the cloud. AI is looking at it and in a millisecond is tagging that picture with different confidence levels of what it sees. It sees a buck, doe, coyote, fawn, pig, turkey. I mean, we, we've trained it on numerous species, more than 10 now. Uh, we're even doing research projects where we're having to train it for spotted skunks to do research with different universities and government agencies. Um, try not to get off in the weeds there, but um, so it looks at that picture in, in, in milliseconds and then it drops it onto your dashboard. And if you see that picture, that's a, a picture that would be on your dashboard um, in your folder for a new, any number of properties. You can have any number of users on your account accessing your data at many levels of uh, privacy. Like with you, I, I gave you a, a free um, look at, a, I've created a folder for you on my account. I've got 20 folders and I just gave you access to the one that you can, you can use and play around in. Um, I'm trying to, I wish there was more pictures here to show, but uh, the visual is um, a rows and columns of pictures that in batches. And then the filtering system is where it really, it, it really gets cool. My favorite filter is one called none. 
And so if I'm, let's say I got a thousand, <laughs> got a thousand pictures in rows and columns. Okay. And I go over and I click none and it all of a sudden decreases to a batch of, let's say 200. And I look to those rows and columns and it's crows and it's squirrels and it's the wind blowing and it's brush moving and it's just nothing. I hate those. And I, I can just select all and delete. You don't even have to do that. You just ignore them. But it filters those out um, instantly instead of you having to sit there and just the winds heavy wind last night, I'm going to have to look at 40 pictures that have nothing else. Um, none does that for you. Then you can filter for bucks only, does only, phones only. Any one of those filtering um, criteria, whether it be species, people, uh, we nail people um, because they're so unique to, you know, trail camera imagery, um, bipedal, you know, standing upright. Um, we, we do get a lot of jokes and, and a lot of our users that, that want to know if we can find Bigfoot if he shows up and <laughs> playing around with that. But, uh, uh, but that's, you know, the, the basics, the foundation of it is to make our time as managers, people that, that love, yeah, we love looking at pictures because we like to see what's out there and kind of live with those critters through imagery. Um, but we don't want to do it all the time. And it's, we're trying to achieve these goals of, finding needles in a haystack to pull out, you know, the five, 10, 15 target bucks for this year at, at that very simple level, or we're doing a full, uh, a full scale trail camera survey. I want to spend less time, you know, living in those pictures and more time in the field, putting up stands and working food plots and doing very important things, which all correspond in that same part of the early season you know, that August, September period of time. At the same time, I know how valuable that data is. So I want to get it done. I just So what does this done. cost? Let's, let's talk about what does it cost? Let's talk a little more about all the things it does beyond just what we're talking about. It's not just about trail camera images. We have full-scale mapping. Um, you saw some of that uh, earlier when you and I were talking. We have a very cool stand wind uh, preference indexing system that's uh, the only kind I know of, um, of the others that are out there. But you drop stands, you can drop any kind of pin on the map. It's geolocated. It, it's, you need to do it for all your cameras, of course. But any of your stands, your feeders, you can create polygons for food plots, give them names. All, you know, the, I'd say the basic mapping tools are all there that you see with other apps and you see with Google Earth and, and so forth. But um, wind preference, this is cool. Um, you drop a pin and you give it the stand name and you locate it on another map system. And it, so it's geolocated. And then you go to a wind preference and it's a circle around the stand where you draw red, yellow, green. And so the wind portion of the circle that's red means if the wind's coming out of that direction, it's a bad day. The yellow is an okay day. So if it's coming from either direction on the yellow, it's okay just wind. So your basic uh, kind of stereotypical wind direction stand setup is you've got a food plot or a field, ag field, and then you've got a wood lot behind you, and then maybe the highways over here or the property boundaries over here. I definitely don't want my wind direction going into the food plot and or for different people in different states and counties, the feeder or the attractant or whatever it may be. Main focal point of where What's drawing deer to my, my hunting stand? I don't want, if the wind's going that direction, you know, unless you just want to say, I only have one day to hunt and I'm just going to go deal with it. Um, or you're in a box stand and you feel that's going to, you know, keep you, <laughs> keep your scent covered. Um, at least I know it's not a good day. And so all of those markers on your mobile app light up green, red, or yellow after you set those wind preferences for those stand locations. And so I can be literally heading from the house to the property and look and say, I really wanted to hunt, you know, the old Creek stand, but the winds, it's just not, it's, it's red. It's saying, no, don't do it based on my preferences. Not it's, you know, the apps preferences. So, but you know, the old yellow stand looks pretty good. So I'm going to go there and you can forecast this three days out. So if you and your buddies are going in three days to hunt the weekend, you can all start talking about what stands you're going to hunt Friday, Saturday, Sunday, based on these wind directions. So that's a really cool, unique app feature with our mapping system. 
Um, and, you know, beyond that, just a full mapping uh, integration with very much like anything. What's this with. heat maps deal? I'm sorry? Heat maps. Oh, I mean, uh, thank you for uh, – let's just talk about that. So our mapping system corresponds with all your camera locations. And if your cameras – and they are taking pictures of does, bucks, fawns, coyotes, all sorts of things. And so I can go to the, the map system and I can say, show me in this date window, whether it be currently to date or, you know, a month ago, two months ago, show me where the most buck activity was on these cameras. And that's what it'll look like. It'll light up, you know, red, hot, yellow, blue for the hottest stands. It'll light up a light, you know, aqua, You'll see a blue tent for those that aren't so hot. And then you can do that for individual animals. So, um, and that's something I didn't get to, get to talk about was ID mode, uh, a very um, user interface. Because that's infrared, right? Yeah, it, it's not infrared. It's, it's a, a heat activity um, visual, you know, it, it shows visually where the most activity is around whatever your criteria might be. But, but with ID mode, we skipped over that from, you know, buck tags and counting deer to um, a very important part was uniquing these bucks. So I, this was something that I'd been thinking about for years. And when I took the idea to, to Jonathan and those guys, they were like, okay, I, we get it, but here's how it needs to work. And now we've got ID mode. So I can take a picture and select a buck, give it a name. Let's just call him Joe. And, um, and so then once I've done that, I've created a profile for Joe and he goes to our named animals page, our buck catalog. And I got one picture, but now I want more pictures of Joe. So I'm going to filter my batch to look at pictures that the camera where I found Joe is. And, you know, so I'm not looking through all the pictures. I'm just kind of filtering down my batch to, to and, and there's other ways to filter it by point class and things that make it even faster. But um, so I'm looking at Joe on the left and now I've got a different user interface window. I'm looking at the picture from the batch on the right and I'm just going clicking through them. And I can close out and just scroll down and find one that where I think it's him. It opens back up into ID mode. And every time that I see a picture that matches Joe, I can zoom in, zoom out, brightness, contrast. If I say side by side, that's Joe, then there'll be a check mark for every buck in the picture. Um, and I just click that check mark. And that picture is now added to his profile. And it, it's incredible, you know, for me to say it that quickly and get a, get a feel for it and visual of it it's a little difficult, but, but how fast you can profile and unique eight, five, 10, 15 deer, especially if you're just focusing on those big guys, um, is, is pretty incredible. Um, you know, I've gone in and just started uniquing bucks and 10 minutes had passed by and I had eight or 10 bucks, unique profile named estimated age and shoot. Don't shoot big part of this, big part of this. Well, you can label each buck in your profile, uh, based on what you as the landowner, as the manager, or your the, the combination of everybody's thoughts and feelings about this particular deer for that year, guys, let's let him go. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So you mark him as not targeted to harvest. And so when anyone in the stand pulls up the mobile app, um, the mobile app is like a hunting guide in your hand. And you're scrolling down through all the bucks and you see an eight point in the field and this has happened. And you go to eight filter for eight points and you see, okay, that's him. I see by the, you know, this certain feature uh, and the way his, you know, he, he has a sweep up or something. That is definitely him. And it says, do not shoot. Well, then you've all agreed not to shoot him. And so, and now three, four years into this and, and a lot of different, uh, like the Kentucky Buck Factory guys, um, they did a testimonial video. I think I sent you that link if you got to watch it, but, uh, uh, and they did it, um, you know, without being paid or sponsored, they just, they were really happy with the program. And we looked at each other talking about this very subject and said, you know, it's saving lives. It's saving box lives that might very well have been taken too soon by a unexperienced hunter or someone who just doesn't know the deer on the property and what, the management or the people involved have decided to do. And then of course you see the big guy and you match him up and it's the thumbs up sitting there and it says targeted for harvest. Um, you're good to go. You got a green light. So that's, we kind of jumped over that to, to talk about, you know, before we start, 
talking about where the rubber meets the road and that's how much it costs is, is how much it gives you the power of this thing, the levels of it, harvest data, anyone that, you know, collects body weights, jaw bones, lactation from their does when they harvest a deer on the property, which I say you ought to be doing. Um, it's not that difficult to take a little extra time and get that data because it can tell you a lot, but definitely get the age. All the other data without the age is honestly worthless uh, from a management standpoint. Uh, it's not telling you anything, but um, we, you can log all that into Hunt Pro on the mobile app. It's saved, it's captured. Even if you don't have cell service, it'll wait till you have cell service and it'll it'll push that into the cloud and, and log it in. And then we analytically break that data down for you. You know, what does all this mean for my harvest data? If I killed 10 or 100 deer, um, what does it mean? Observation data, uh, we can use activity maps to show the heat activity around what hunters are seeing from the stand. They open the mobile app, they click on, there's pictures of the mobile app on the website. They click on the binoculars and it'll give you a list of things that you can choose from. And so it's real time geo located. So if I'm in the stand and, you know, I see a, a, a buck and two does and they move on, I'm just open the app and say, I saw a buck and two does and just clicking buttons and observation data is basically just like camera data. I mean, in, in, in a lot of ways, you got two human eyes in a stand or in a truck or riding around or whatever they're doing. You start collecting that data observation uh, over three, four, five months during the season, and it can tell you a lot of things. It help you decide, find, make final decisions based on more than just one piece of information. You know what I mean? You, you take them all, harvest data, observation data, trail camera survey data, of course, and you look at all the averages and say, okay, here's where we landed. But um, so it's it's a, to get back to your question and and – Obviously, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about this. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> it, 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 this is surreal for me. Um, you know, I, again, I go back to my story. It's uh, your baby. You, you think, well, I feel like it is. Now, there's a lot of way smarter people involved here than me, I promise you. Uh, and that's why it took me meeting people like this or, or you know, uh, making that connection to share my passion and the need for this in our community our research community. Uh, again, we're working with researchers. We took roughly, we'll just say roughly, but I'm close on this, seven or eight million photos from MSU, uh, Mississippi, State, Mississippi State University. They did not want someone to sit there and look at eight million pictures to find bears. We took those photos and we trained up on bears, our AI engine. And in a couple of weeks, we ran it twice. We turned out 1,500 pictures of bears. So some poor soul or souls, uh, <laughs> grad students, undergrads or interns would have looked at, had to literally look at seven, eight million pictures and to only find 1500 pictures of bears. We did it in, you know, under two weeks and using AI. So that's, it, it's very multifaceted and it's scalable. We have a professional level before we get to cost and we have a ranch level. Now ranch level we talked about this earlier, but, you know, down here in the deep South, we call hunting properties, commercial, private, large scale, many guests, you know, all the facilities and the lodging and the, the fancy, um, you know, getaways, the Ritz Carlton's of hunting lodges. Um, the, you know, we, we've, we've got a package for them and, and it really takes it to a whole other level with guest management, signing liability waivers, um, checking in, checking out, logging in observation data, when you check out of a stand physically, all on the mobile app, monitoring locations of people, communications among the groups, so forth and so on. It's, it's more expensive. I would dare say, and I'm not uh, saying this in any other way to just, I know the hunting community and I know um, folks like me that, that love listening to podcasts like yours, just trying to learn more, um, probably are more suited to our professional package. Um, and you can find out this uh, if you go to pricing on the, the homepage and it, it'll break down all of what each package offers you and, and the, the cost. Um, and the pro, it, it gives you a lot of this stuff, uh, probably as much as most folks with relatively average sized properties and budgets and, you know, running a trail camera survey. Professionals like me, consultants that are running surveys, professional package will do that for you. Uh, we have a monthly payment program. We also have an annual where you can save some money. Uh, most of, a lot of our folks so far have been signing up for the annual payment. Uh, they pay once, 
And it's based uh, strictly pricing is based on the number of pictures that you upload. Has nothing to do with the properties, how many properties, how many folders for properties, how many people you want using your your uh, dashboard. Uh, it is strictly based on how many pictures you upload. So 25,000 images annually for the professional package starts at, um, you know, with an annual payment, 315 bucks a year. That's less than, you know, it would cost to just get one good cellular camera and pay for the data package. Uh, here you have a tool for that cost that is extremely powerful and will make your life a lot easier and make your management uh, program far more successful. Um, again, ranch, we're, we're talking larger properties, larger budgets, um, places you might be familiar with, like uh, Honey Break Plantation in Louisiana, um, uh, Brazen Forest in South Carolina, a couple other very large, you know, prestigious, well-known named properties uh, are using our ranch package. Um, the uh, WC Bradley Farm in West Georgia, um, that company is a big company in the outdoor industry. But um, so I would tell any of your listeners that uh, want to give this a, a try and uh, that we do offer demos. We do offer training. You can go to our home site and just click. Uh, I'd like to, to see a demo. I'd like to talk to someone and uh, talk more about this. We, we have a team of folks, myself included, that we'd glad to talk to you. One thing I want to I want to chit chat about is that when we were talking oh a month or so ago when we were talking about the concept immediately I said to you I said realtors like Mossy Hill properties White Hill properties or big Holland Hall out west here I would definitely get in front of those people because if somebody's buying a hunting property okay they're, they're spelling they're selling they're spending multiple seven figures but if i own that property let's take um, one of the forbes ranches um one of the well the hicka readers but um what was it the lodge of chama thirty thousand acre ranch Okay, that was owned by some people out of Texas. A friend of mine, Frank Sims, uh, managed it for many, many years. Then he retired. Hicka Raiders uh, purchased it. And then it's an exclusive 30,000 acre ranch. There's deer, there's bison, and there's elk. There's trout ponds, 20,000 square foot, gorgeous lodge, chef, the whole thing, right? So if I ever wanted to sell that, I would love to have all this on Hunt Pro to be able to go and build data that's factual. That's not, yeah, we have elk here. We Here's some pictures of elk in the field. Okay, when was it? What type of year? When did they move through? When are they calving? When are they not? And you could manage that herd, I think, so much better. So I totally much agree. better. Something I've been saying um, myself, exactly the way you said it, um, this is an incredible tool for the ranch farm and recreational property real estate market. No um, question about it. No doubt. Um, I mean, if you look at the cost is is – well, we'd have a special really cost. We'd have a special. We'd have a special cost for that. Right, I got we're not going to give them for twenty two fifty when they're getting seven figures for selling the you might dirt. Want a little on the back end, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> you think about your your average marking collateral package for a, a recreational property. It's a fancy PDF. You know, there's some YouTube videos with the. Um, the drones flying over and, and it's got the, the cool music and, you know, it's an emotional sale package. Um, let's face it. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are factual or have to be, you know, land size, uh, surrounding properties, et cetera. So forth. Yeah, and how, how much, you know, what uh, you do know, they so got water rights? What do you got? All that stuff. Of, of a giant book that may not have even been taken on the property. You know, that's exactly. a lot of, so it, here's what I've always thought when this thing really started taking shape, 
um, is that if I were selling a property to truly, you know, interested people in recreational high quality hunting properties, they don't want to start, they won't turn key. They don't want to have to, you know, start with a raw piece of, of average dirt and grow it up for five years to, to have it be a great hunting property. Then I would deploy cameras immediately and I would want to show these potential buyers what these cameras are telling us. And that's data. And it's not only data, but um, I would want to map it. I'd want to show uh, in regards to marketing a property, you know, we marker deer stands and we can drop markers for cameras. You could drop a marker for potential lodge site, drop a marker for um, the, the lake view and just upload images of, of what that looks like. So anyone navigating, it's like a, uh, a virtual tour in this app, along with a lot of really, you know, research-based, scientific-based um, data on what the turkey population looks like, what the deer herd looks like. What's How the many black bears are on it? Exactly. And, you know, so if I'm selling it and I, I get an interested buyer, I'm going to immediately, you can make them a user with mobile app access only or access to that one folder only. Yeah, like they have to be a credible buyer before I'm going to give them. That'd be a, yeah, not a tire kicker, but you can do that too. I mean, you know, if you get them in there and they get to looking around, you might turn them from a tire kicker into a credible buyer. You never know. But that's what the, you can put as many people in there as you want to. No extra cost. All they get is a look and you can set their time to be, have access for three days or seven days or yeah, you can I, leave them. I, I just think it's a huge, huge thing. If I was out here in the West, looking for Western property, right? This is what I'd want to see before I write the check for multiple, multiple millions of dollars. Because I want fly fishing, I want elk hunting, and if I can get some mule deer hunting, fine. But if I have fly fishing and the elk, that's the property I want. You And I, I win the lottery, so I call you, I say, rant. Let's go to work. <laughs> it, That's what I want. Of, you know, it's, it, every every week or so, we find a new place where we have applications to that work with that part of the outdoor industry. So uh, you talked about fishing. Um, North Georgia, I, of course, live here in Georgia. And um, the uh, the foothills country, there's uh, the Soak River. And it's, what, it's known for some very fine Georgia trout fishing. And a, an old friend of mine runs an outfitting uh, business up there where he has 30 or 40 members, high paying members. He provides the lodge and the food and all that. And um, his biggest problem is that they reserve sections of the, the, his private land river frontage to fish and it's first come first serve. Well, with our ranch package, um, we have reservations, stand reservations. And you can set it up to where it's first come first serve. All right, guys, if you want, you know, brace two or section three or whatever, whoever gets there at, you know, Sunday afternoon at 3 PM, whoever gets there first gets it. Um, you just took a lot of his hassle and headache away and, and made it's it. Management of your people, you know, people and, man, guest management is what I call it. A lot of this stuff. Is, yeah. It's yeah. just management, you know, of your resource availability and then how do how do we want to fish it? Okay, how many elk do I want to take out of this thousand acres? And I could yeah, do that yeah. with your with your system. I can say okay, it's, it's herd management, and uh, you know determining that not just pulling numbers out of the air. No, based on your best wild guess, we have data to back it up to say you got data. You know that okay, we got a herd maybe fifty to a hundred that are working through this area. Okay. There's one good bull. He's a 330 bull. You can take him, but no other bull. That's mm -hmm. it. And yeah, you can would do that the with this system. Yeah. And you'd have multiple pictures of him from trail cameras on water holes or wherever you got pictures of him. And you'd have a profile picture that's just that glory, you know, big head shot. There's no mistake right. in it. I mean, look at those eye guards and look at those daggers. I mean, that's him. But when I see him, I see that thumbs up. And not, you don't have to do it in real time if you, you, when you're sitting there killing time, you know, and nothing's at the water hole or, or you're just walking or you're taking a camp break, whatever. You can start just spending time with those deer real quickly and real easily on the mobile app and learning them and getting them in your head. So if you come down to that, you know, sorry, that uh, 
you know, you've got three seconds to make a decision, five seconds, and you're, you're drawn down on a, an elk. You, you know that animal now. You spend a lot of time with it in the mobile app with the trail camera pictures. But and think about the applications for, um, and I've been saying this, um, co-ops, you know, lease co-ops, where you've got uh, five, eight, ten lease groups that are um, working together to manage um, on the same level and on the same page. And each one of them has a 500 acres or a thousand. But when you join them all together, it's 5,000 or 6,000 acres. Might be 10,000. But ten, I mean, and you go into out into out west, it could be twenty, fifty, a hundred thousand, right? Be able to, whatever. Um, but but giving them this tool to where they they can all communicate amongst themselves what they're seeing, what they want to do with the animals that they saw on their property, and then this group said, "We always saw the same deer. We agree. Let's let's let him go." Then they're all on the same page, and they all agree. You know, look. The sex ratio on, on my property shows we're getting a little bit unbalanced here. We need to take some does. This group agrees. Their numbers saw the same thing. They all accumulatively collect harvest data. So now you don't just have 15 deer from this one lease to look at their harvest data. You've got 200 deer from all the leases together to look at a much bigger sample size of data to get a much better picture of what that herd looks like, not only with trail camera survey, but with observation data. And with uh with harvest what about the national deer alliance uh Have the nda with those people uh, national deer Association. My, my brother Lindsay has worked with them for over 20 years i think now he's Lindsay thomas yeah that's my bro yeah <laughs> what a guy he's a good man he's a good yeah. man he, yeah i taught him everything he knows and uh he, <laughs> he's come a long way bruce has been a, a long long hard road you know training up a, a journalism major into uh, the art and science of deer management, but he he's there. We got him there. <laughs> but no, but so yeah. what do they call it now? Because I used to know as a QDMA, and I got my, I got a couple yeah. certificates on the wall for, you know, the stewardship and stuff like that. Yeah, I was a QDMA uh, professional deer manager of the year in two thousand nine. Yeah, and I was very active with the organization. Would go to all the national. Uh, so what are they called now? It is a National, no, National, NDA, National Deer Association. Association. And they uh, they had, you know, COVID changed a lot of things for a lot of these NGOs. Um, they've gotten away from banquets and national conventions. They no longer put out the print magazine. They do, it's all online newsletters. And uh, they do, um, you know, your steward training events in the field. And uh, that's what it is. And that, that's just the new era we live in. And um, right. but they're doing, I think they're doing well in, in regrowing their their membership from losses that everybody incurred through COVID. But uh, they're uh, they're doing good. Yeah, um, we uh, we talk with them and work with them. We're we're just as a company, we're not at a place right now to start. Um, you know, quite honestly, just throwing money out at different groups to market for. No, but uh, how about yeah, getting your brother to you market your product for you? you. Know, at 29 yeah, bucks it, a month. But they're aware of it. They are aware of it. We, we've talked with them. And uh, they, of course, uh, my brother knows who I am and knows what we're doing with Hunt Pro. So, there, you know, there's a, a, a mutual um, Good. awareness and uh, appreciation among us. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we'll get more and more active, I think, as, as our company grows and, and becomes at, at a level where we, we should and could and can and will do more of that, that type of uh you know, sponsorships and partners and so forth. Okay, so let's go back. I don't know what the heck this is. I picked up something. Yeah, if you if you'll go okay, back to that. So I want to go back here. So I want to go back to the home page. So tell people once again how to get a hold of this app, where they have to go, the URL. You can see it right here, but talk it out. So you go to huntpro.app spend some time uh, with the features, you know, look, look around, read. Um, you can request a demo that will send us a notification. You're interested in talking to one of us on the team one-on-one uh, -on -one, and someone will reach out to you uh, with, you know, within a reasonable amount of time and we'll line up either a virtual demo or a phone call and we'll talk you through um, more specifics, answer any questions um, and um, to buy it. If uh, you just go to buy now, uh, and it'll take you to our pricing page and our options. So 
you know, if you want to do the hunter professional or the ranch, you just scroll down to the bottom or scroll down to the bottom of each of those cell, those boxes and say select plan. Uh, let's just do it for professional. Uh, if you'll go over to select plan, either one. And depending on the images you think you're going to upload, um, and you probably know how many pictures you're bringing in each year just to do what it is you're doing. If you're a professional like me and you know you're going to be doing five, eight, ten trail camera surveys for different clients and you know how many pictures are involved there. I am personally right now working on a professional's network uh, opportunity for any of us out there like myself that can get on board and, and uh, have incentives and benefits to using Hunt Pro to run their trail camera surveys. So it, it's all um, it's all right here. And then it's just, you know, you can pay with credit card, PayPal, sign up online. You will get an email from us um, with, you know, your email as username and then you create your password. And from there you are in and you can start building your property in the folder and uploading images and getting started. Um, the mobile app is free on, um, uh, on the Apple store or Android and uh, just use your username, password to log in. And uh, the mobile app is, is, it's, it's so cool. Um, you know, and I'm having people tell me and I'm doing it myself. We had three or four or five apps doing different things that we liked about something different about each one. And more and more with Hunt Pro, I'm either not using them anymore or have deleted them. And I'm just doing everything in Hunt Pro. Um, and that's not really what we set out to do. We're not trying to compete with other apps in the mapping world necessarily. We, we just had so many customers come and say, all right, we love what this trail camera AI does, but we, we, need, we need more out of the mapping system or we want it to do this, will it do this? And this group is extraordinary and, uh, you know, that we're not shipping this work out overseas. We're doing it all in-house and, um, and it's a, a very big, successful, well-funded company. So it gets done quick. And, um, but we are here to uh, kind of be the tip of the spear on bringing IT into the outdoor industry, into wildlife management, and hunting is a part of that. Um, and I'd like and, you just to say what you just said again about there's other quote unquote mapping companies out there and resource companies out there. This is a yeah, different tool. It's different in in the fact that it does things that those other apps don't do uh, with trail cameras. We've integrated all of the trail camera stuff with AI and, and, and in a very much more powerful and enhanced um, uh, package with, with Hunt Pro, we've integrated it with honestly a lot of the things that those other map apps do from a mapping standpoint. And the way that they're integrated is unique too in that I can take all the pictures from different camera locations and like we, like we, we talked about, build a heat activity map. Um, unless you are have built in the, the trail camera image and hunting data, harvest data, observation data side of this in the app, you know, the mapping things have been around a while. It's not that, it's not that hard to build a, a, a mapping app. Um, what we've got right now and, and what we have patented uh, and have several patents um, that have, have been have cleared uh, to protect this is that we have the integration of the two. The, the, the science of data, of looking at wildlife data from so many different um, perspectives and scientifically, you know, based and very accurate and accuracy checked and tested. And then we have, um, you know, the map tools. And so it's, you can, you know, one of the coolest things I thought when they first started coming out in some of these apps, um, I think it's Landglide is one of them, but you could look at property boundaries um, and see, you know, who owns it next to you. Um, you know who to go talk to if you want to knock on a door and say, hey, you mind if I can I hunt your property or can I lease it or whatever? That was years ago. Um, we have that with Hunt Pro. Um, so uh, it, it's, again, we're just wanting uh, to build something that is kind of a one-stop shop. I think that's what definitely where we are and where we're continuing to go. Um, and not only a one-stop shop, but offers so many different features that you can't find anywhere else. Um, and so, yeah, it's not cost prohibitive in any way. Um, I, like, again, we talked about the professional level package, 225,000 images that would fit the needs of a lot of relatively smaller landowners with a handful of cameras and just them and their family hunt it or them and their buddies hunt it. You know what I mean? So it's very scalable and it covers a broad, broad demographic from top to bottom of, of the people that are, are outdoorsmen, private landowners, public land, you know, I, 
I can't say it's it, it would be really ideal for public land hunters. I mean, if you're running trail cameras on public land, you're taking a big risk. And uh, yeah. and I got to <laughs> put an adjunct. A number of states have already come out and and the prohib the prohibiting prohibit of the uh, use of trail cameras on public lands or state owned lands. It's it's uh and that's it's, a discussion, but you have to be aware of this. this program is set up for the private land. We are more for the private landowner and leaseholder and for researchers, for government university research. Uh, right. And, you know, these DMAP programs, like Georgia has a DMAP program now. Texas has had one for years where the landowner can sign up and and if the they can provide data, which is where that's kind of our hub. If they can show the, the local regional biologists that, hey, here's our harvest data and here's our trail camera data and here's our observation data. And, and it's telling us we've got a, a real situation with density and, and does and we need more tags. Um, this is such an easy way to communicate that from landowner to biologist without them having to fill out spreadsheets and write stuff down on paper and hand them, you know, paperwork. And we have interests. Uh, we have people that are involved with these DMAP programs here in Georgia. Um, see, see the opportunities here to make their lives a lot easier and make this a, a much, the DMAP program much more successful and effective for the landowner. Um, so it's, you could really sit down and spend a whole day just getting creative with where this could be used and how it can help so many people. But, um, but yeah, I would have to say more for the private landowner, leaseholder, researcher, research project, um, type folks. And, um, but Hey, there's a lot of us out there. A lot of, yes, us. sir. Our legion. <laughs> All right. Final word, rant. Final word, check us out. Uh, we, uh, you know, again, it's cliche. You hear in the hunting industry how this new product is uh, revolutionary or game changing or the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, this is one of very, very, very few that I've seen come along that I truly am confident in saying that. Um, you can learn so much more. Give us a, 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 a jing, uh, click request a demo, talk to us. We'd love to talk to you. We've got some great, uh, we're online, uh, Instagram, Facebook, huntpro.app, easy to find. Uh, we are trying to build that base up and, um, you know, that's a, <laughs> that takes time, but, uh, we'd love for you to follow us, share, uh, with us, you know, your, your questions, your issues with trail cameras. Uh, we, we love trail cameras. Obviously we'll talk it all day with you and find us on social media. Come to our website, huntpro.app. Um, we are, uh, SEO, um, optimized. So, um, you know, if you just type in Hunt Pro to any search engine, it'll take you straight to us. But, um, but Bruce, thank you. I know we've gone long. and I again, Thank you, I'm sir. Well, so I thank you on this, behalf but... of all the 15,000 contacts throughout North America that are part of Hutch on Hunting. And I, I just switched software. And, and so I imported 15,000 people that know about Hutch on Hunting. And all right, so, man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's exciting times over here, but it's exciting times to meet up with a guy like you that we talked back in 2015 about whitetails and, and how far you've come. So I salute you, sir, and look forward to the next time we get to visit. My same to you, my friend, and uh, let's talk again in the, the months to come and uh, revisit and uh, and, and let's, uh, let's, let's don't uh, lose contact, buddy. Yes, sir.